So, what is a sacrifice? Well, a sacrifice is an act of author offering something precious. What's precious to us? Time is a precious commodity. It's one thing that's precious to us. Amen. So it's an act of offering something precious. Who are we offering it to? We're offering it up to the Lord. Something offered is a sacrifice. Anything we offer is a sacrifice. And sometimes we may not be offering things up to the Lord, but we might be offering time and things to other people. But God sees that. It's a destruction or a surrender of something for the sake of something else. In the Old Testament, it was a destruction of an animal that was being offered up for our sinful nature. It's something that's given up or lost. Parents make sacrifices all the time. They make sacrifices for the children. They make sacrifices to have to go out and earn extra money. They make sacrifices to make sure that they're putting food on the table. They make sacrifices to be there for their children. When my daughter was born, I made the sacrifice of not getting breakfast anymore. <laughs> not by choice. Not by choice. I mean, you know, sacrifices are made when you have a family. Parents sacrifice for their children. Just like God the Father sacrificed for all of us. We're all his children. And he sacrificed his son for us. Some other related words that, that tie into sacrifice would be dedicate, devote, donate, give. They all wrap into that word. They all kind of relate and tie together. The offering up of sacrifice is to be regarded as a divine institution. Sacrifice did not originate with man. We didn't invent it. God himself appointed it as a method which is acceptable in worship and was to be offered to him by man. Amen. Sacrifice is originated by God as a result of man's sin. After man sinned the first time, of course we know Adam and Eve, I oftentimes gravitate back to that, the Lord clothed Adam and Eve with the skins of animals because they knew now that they were like, oh, geez, you know, I'm naked. What's going on here? So those animals happened to be the very first blood sacrifice for the sin that was, that was committed. And the byproduct of the animals were the skins that they were able to clothe themselves with. And that's where the blood sacrifice, the animal sacrifice, originated for the sins that we, for, that we commit. It was an offering to the Lord. The story of Cain and Abel comes to mind. Remember Cain and Abel, they were brothers. One was kind of the opposite of the other one. And we had Abel who offered a sacrifice and Cain also offered up a sacrifice. But one had a flock and one had wheat. And the one that had the wheat really wasn't like, you know what, I just have wheat over here. And the one with the flock took the best from that flock to make his sacrifice and offer it up to the Lord. And when he took the very best, and that's what the Lord wanted, he didn't want second best. Or the, or, or, or the run. He wanted you to make a sacrifice of the very best that you had. And that was done. He took the best animal out of his flock and he offered it up. So Abel offered up that sacrifice. Now Cain, on the other hand, had the wheat. And he's like, you know what? All right, I'm going to go through the motions here. I'm just going to bundle up this, this, this batch of wheat over here and I'm going to offer it up. That wasn't satisfactory to the Lord. The Lord did not accept his sacrifice because he didn't follow the rule and he offered up the wheat. Now, sacrifices were not just made for sin, but sacrifices were made in thanksgiving for what you were blessed with. What you were blessed with, 
you wanted to take off the top. Take the very best, because by taking the very best is what you are like, oh, I'm giving this up. But you're giving it up because you're thankful because you were blessed with everything else. Mm -hmm. So you're giving that up. So in Hebrews, is, I got this from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. It says, by faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, Though he died, he still speaks. So, one had a stronger faith than the other one, just like in today. Does our faith waffle when we make a sacrifice? Do we make a sacrifice? In the Mosaic period of the Old Testament, as I studied the history behind that, the fines laws were prescribed by God regarding different kinds of sacrifices that were to be offered and how that offering was to be made. Typically when we think about sacrifices in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, we think about the blood offerings, the sacrifice of an animal, where the head of the household would have taken the hands of the family on his shoulders, he would put the hands on the animal, the sins essentially transferred over, and that was for the forgiveness of the sins. And that's what we often think about is, well, see, it's a sacrifice for our sin. Well, there were two kinds of sacrifices that were defined. We had the, the bloody kind, and we had the unbloody kind. Hmm, think about that. The bloody kind were primarily for sin offerings, but there were also often burnt offerings and peace offerings that the Lord wanted you to have. And in some of the Old Testament stories, they went and they built an offer and they sacrificed an animal. It may not necessarily always be for sin, but they're sacrificing an animal, giving thanks and glory to God. Now, the good news is since the uh, New Covenant, the bloody offerings are, are out of the equation in terms of sacrificing something. Unbloody are sacrifices that we still need to make. They didn't go away. An unbloody sacrifice is the first fruits and tithes. Making a sacrifice of our first fruits and tithes. Making a sacrifice of meat and drink. Or they still have the sacrifice of incense. You go to Catholic churches and they still do the incense burning and whatnot. But the one that we need to focus on is first fruits and tithes, as we're blessed with. How much of that do we actually sacrifice up to the Lord and for the Lord's work? Difficult to say. We need to examine our own hearts, what we're doing there. And in, and, and, and in the area of sin, we don't have to do the bloody offering because Christ himself died on the cross for our sins. He made that sacrifice for us. He gave us the ability to have eternal life. There is no guarantee for that eternal life. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 26, it reads, For if we go on sinning willfully, if we go on sinning willfully, we know we're doing that sin. It's our will that we're doing that sin. We're planning to say that lie because we want to cover the bases, or we're planning to steal that thing out of the store. They're just two examples because we're willfully doing that. So it says, if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth. So we're Christians, and we know what the truth of the Bible is, and we know that we shouldn't be sinning willfully. It's going to happen. Sometimes the Satan's going to take us, and we did it unthinking about it. That happens but willfully knowing that we're going to do it, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. So, the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross for our sins, it's not going to apply anymore. But we're willfully turning our back on him. So if we deliberately keep on sinning, we will pay the price. Most sin is deliberate. It is a willful act. And for those who commit it 
no sacrifice for his sin is left. And we know that there are going to be certain people that are on the narrow path and certain people on the wide path of destruction. So, we need to be able to figure it out. We need to be able to keep the sacrifice in Christ in our mind, knowing what he did for us. So even if we're, we're thinking about telling that lie, or thinking about lifting this, or thinking about, you know, hurting somebody in some way, think about what he did for us. That will help us to overcome the evil thought that Satan has put into our mind. So what's that going to do? That's a sacrifice of our own willful way. Sacrificing our own thoughts to keep him in our mind. Because if we don't, Judgment Day is going to come, and it's going to be too late at that point in time. And we're going to like, just like with Noah and, and the ark, you know, everybody didn't believe him. But Noah sacrificed an enormous amount of time to build that ark. And he knew that anybody that would get on the ark would be in God's good graces. But everybody did, they didn't believe it. Oh, what are you, what are you crazy? What do you, what do you want to do? Spend all this time doing that? We get criticized today for doing things. We might get criticized because we say to somebody, you know what? I want, I want to a worship service on a Saturday morning. Oh, what do you want to do that for? Give it up your Saturday morning. Could be out playing golf. Could be at the ball game. Could be doing this. Could be doing that. But it's a sacrifice of our time. And then I was looking at Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 26, which reads, For then he would have had to suffer repeatedly since the foundation of the world. But as it is, as he appeared once for, for all at the end of ages, to put away sin by the sacrifice himself. So God knew that man was going to continue to sin. God knew that he had to have a way of doing away with a blood sacrifice. So you've heard the expression, Lamb of God. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, shed his blood for our sins. He sacrificed himself for us. Now, he was obedient. Remember obedience? He respected the Father. Remember we did respect? He had self-control. He resisted temptation in order to make that sacrifice for us. And again, some of the words that we've used in the past, we've got to keep them in our, in our daily lives, and we've got to remember these and how they link together. So we can be obedient to the Lord. We can resist the temptation. And instead of buying whatever we want to buy, maybe we'll help this person out. Or maybe we'll donate that money to the church. Maybe we'll make a sacrifice. Now, one thing that bothers me is people make sacrifices today all the time for us, and we don't even realize it. Military, police, rescue workers, they make sacrifices every day, putting their lives on the line for us. Not to save us for our sins, but to just allow us to have a better life. We don't know that. If we don't remember the ultimate sacrifice Christ made for us, we don't even recognize the fact that these people are out there to give an appreciation for the sacrifices that they make. I go to the airport a lot, and I see a military personnel. I go up and I thank them. Thank you very much for putting your life on the line. Probably should do that with a cop. Probably should do that with a rescue worker. Now, interestingly enough, when I was preparing for this sermon, I was on Facebook yesterday, taking a break, and I saw a Facebook message from <coughs> my great-nephew, Joey, who lives out in Vegas. 